William Livingston was elected the first governor of New Jersey on August 30th, 1776. He was an essayist and political propagandist who helped establish and utilize the New Jersey Gazette as a vehicle to garnish colonial support and satirize the British monarch. As a result, Livingston found himself at the epicenter of machinations orchestrated by the British, resulting in a bounty being placed on his head for his capture. This made him one of the most targeted patriot leaders. Through an examination of Livingston's personal correspondence, proves that the British considered him an immeasurable threat. Livingston wrote to John Henry Livingston on September 29, 1778, in which he stated, I have not been with my own family above two weeks and two years. The business I have gone through, the hardships I have borne, the lodging and diet I have been obliged to submit to, and the numerous stratagems laid for my life which I have escaped are scarcely credible. One of the many attempts on Livingston's life occurred in February 1779. General Clinton, pictured at the bottom right, sent British troops from Long Island to Elizabethtown with the intent to capture William Livingston at his home, Liberty Hall. The governor was not home, however, in the image of the letter on the far left, from John Lawrence to his father, Henry Lawrence, dated February 28, 1779, we know that William Livingston was actually on his way home but was detained in Springfield, which was very close to Elizabethtown. Hearing that he was a target for another assassination plot, William Livingston wrote a sarcastic letter to General Clinton in which he said, Sir, after having apologized for my delaying your and Mr. Franklin's dinner by being accidentally abroad when you did me the honor a few days ago to send Colonel Sterling to wait upon me to New York, I beg leave to acquaint you that I am possessed of the most authentic proofs of a general officer under your command, having ordered a large sum of money to an inhabitant of this state to assassinate me in case you could not take me alive. The entire exchange was published in the New Jersey Gazette on April 28, 1779, which is pictured in the center image. The British forces frequently set fires to New Jersey towns during the American Revolution. Susan Livingston wrote to her sister, Sarah Livingston Jay, on May 27, 1781. Susan explained that Liberty Hall had been between two fires. It's a wonder Liberty Hall Museum is still standing to this day. James Moody, a Loyalist volunteer during the American Revolution, published this proclamation in Rivington's Royal Gazette on August 25, 1781. Offering a reward for Livingston's capture, he stated, if his whole person cannot be brought in, half the sum above specified will be paid for his ears and nose, which are too well known and too remarkable to be mistaken. Livingston faced many hardships over the course of the Revolutionary War. Despite this, he was able to garnish colonial support for independence and at the same time, managed to govern the state of New Jersey, encompassing a pivotal role in a pivotal place.